Okay, let me start sharing. This was a weird, at first I thought the problem was, was um, easy, um, but then I read the little hint at the end of it where it said like, you may need to look up the table, uh, like a table of integrals and like they weren't kidding because uh, the integral in this problem is really hard and, and in, unless you were, the, the only thing I could think of, I mean, obviously we'll, we'll get to it. I'll, I'll start sharing and I'll um, explain what I'm talking about. Um, but the integral in this problem is not like anything you would ever have to do on an exam because I'm pretty sure this is, um, this is 132, right? Not 134. So it's, it doesn't, is that right? You're in 132? Yes. Sorry. Yeah, it shouldn't like there's 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 two like I, I didn't even do this by hand. Like there's there's no reason um, that you unless you were in like a calculus class that you would actually have to do an integral like this. Um, so I did it because I was confused and I, I took the hint and I looked at a table of integrals and so I'll, I'll show you what that means. Um, but yeah, I, I would expect um, this to be uh, easier. Um, and another another point of uh, annoyance is this part right here. I'll, I'll, let me just start instead of explaining uh, it like that. Um, so um, you'll probably remember this from not our very last session, but the one like the, the day before that one, where it was um, uh, talking yeah. about like forces and electric fields. So just a that reminder, really the force um, on particle one due to particle two has both of the charges. It has the distance between those two. So this is just the distance of that vector. And then it, it points in the direction towards the particle that it's talking about. So for instance, this is on one. So this vector uh, R12 points in that direction. And then with the electric field, uh, what we do is we have just one charge or, you know, as we'll talk in, in a second, we can have uh, you know, one charge, many charges, or we can have like a continuous distribution of charges. Uh, but just for one charge, what we can do is forget about one and say, what is the electric field that two creates? So all that we really need to do here is to take away the Q1. And so this is the electric field. I'm just, instead of using these vectors, I'm just doing magnitudes. That's what those bars mean. And now we're gonna introduce something called the potential. It is, um, it's like one step. So there's forces, that's like interaction. There's fields, it's what is like felt by, by things in the area. And then potential is actually what creates the field. Um, so potential is like, um, if, if you were to make like a grid, like a, a graph or something, and you were to assign a number at every single uh, point, um, so like, for instance, like at the, at the X equal two, Y equal one part, there would be like a number four or something. And then at, at every other intersection, there'd be another number. Whereas the electric field is once you connect those numbers, um, it's like the slopes. So if you, if you were to look at this in another way, you could call this the derivative. And so that's this, this is like a three dimensional derivative. It's the derivative in the x direction, the y and the z, or we can just call it r. And so if you were to look at what is uh, dv over dr, well, that's just uh, the rise, like the, the dv is, is how much those numbers change, and dr is the distance that it travels. So it's the rise over the run, and e is just the slope. So it's how, it's kind of like how quickly, let me look up a picture for you. Um, potential topographical map. So topographical maps are like on maps when you see like those circles and it, it looks like a mountain. So when there is a positive potential or a positive charge, the potential looks like this. So you would have like a, a 10 on your graph here, a bunch of eights in that circle, a bunch of sixes and then zeros and stuff like that. Um, and so the electric field is a vector that points along this mountain. And it tells you, you know, how, how quickly the mountain is falling off and stuff like that. So charges create potentials and pot from the potential, you can get information about the electric fields. Um, and, you know, it turns out you can, you can, you know, figure out forces just from the potential or the electric field or, or whatever. So 
if we were to think backwards from this equation, if we know that the negative of the derivative of this quantity called the potential V is equal to this thing, how would we figure that out? We have, so there are only so many options because we know that there needs to be, we need to take the derivative of something and get a square, uh, an R2 in the bottom. And so by, you know, the rules, you know, if you take, if you just write, you know, X squared on your sheet of paper, how do you take the derivative of that? You bring the two down and then it's, uh, instead of a two up in, the, up in the exponent, it's a one. So the derivative of X squared is two X. We can do the same thing with negative exponents. So if you do the uh, derivative of X negative two, you bring the negative two down. So it's negative two X, but you also, decrease the exponent so it would be negative three so if we want something that's negative two what we need as a quantity for this v is negative one so let's try uh, the derivative of uh, r to the negative one power or one over r and so we get this thing which is exactly what that is and hence we put this little minus sign here to get rid of this minus because if we have um, uh, this minus one up here, we bring that minus one down when we take the derivative. So it comes down here and that's why that minus sign is here. And so the, uh, we have the, the forces, which is both, both Q's, R squared, E, which is one Q, R squared, and then V, which is one Q and R uh, one. So it's just uh, a power of R. And we can just confirm, you know, uh, the negative of this, we can you know double check ourselves. If we take the derivative of this, uh, the negative one goes down into the front, and we uh, take the negative one and decrease it by one, so that we get a two, and we get the electric field back. So that means uh, this equation is legit. Okay, so now that we have a formula for uh, v, let's kind of generalize it to instead of just one point charge, like here we were looking at. Uh, just Q2. What if we had like the force or the electric field or the potential instead of, you know, the force of two on one, what if we had three and four and, you know, et cetera. What we can do is, is write this as a summation. So instead of, because these, these properties are additive. So if you have, it's kind of like a wave. If you have one wave, uh, you add another wave just by adding those two things together. It's, it's this exact same thing. Uh, and that's what fields are. It's a, it's a characteristic property of something called the electric field. Um, and because the, the force and the potential are related to it, they are as well. So if you have the force of two on one, the force of all of them on one is just adding them all together. And that's what I do with this. It's called summation notation down here. So that just means that I fill in this, this, this right here is equal to this for I running through two, three, and four. But what if instead of these, what, what are called discrete things here, so discrete means like one, two, three. What if instead of, you know, one, two, three, I had like uh, every single possible number between one and a million. Like it's, a, it's, it's actually a, a continuum. So instead of like, you know, these two, three, four things, what if I had some, not, not a point particle, like a giant blob. In that case, we don't do sums, we do integrals. So you would integrate over this whole surface. And so in this case, we actually uh, encountered this, I think last week, this is something called the charge density. So instead of these individual charges here, so if we have the uh, potential is all the individual charges and how far they are away from where we're measuring. Instead, we do the charge density. And this R prime is what's called a dummy variable. It's what we integrate over. So at the end of the day, there won't be any R primes in our answer. It's just that we need to make our, uh, our integration, it needs to be a function. You need to integrate uh, something. And so this, this would be our, our equation for uh, potential when we have a charge distribution instead of uh, discrete things. So it looks like this. I'm, I'm, I just swapped out that K because I, I noticed that um, I remember from our last week that they, they don't use K, um, it's the simpler thing, it's a one over four pi epsilon. So 
Um, let me just simplify this a little bit. Um, this symbol right here, it's like a, a script R, is something that's used often for this uh, thing. It's the distance between where you're measuring and some point on the surface, like uh, like you know, the R the R prime is like inside our blob right here. And so this little symbol right here is just for distance. It's like an absolute value. And then instead of uh, D three R prime, which is a it's just a you know, D one R would just be a line. D two R would be like a, a square or a circle. It's an area. And then D three R is a volume. So it's like X, Y, Z. So that's, I'm just replacing this with a volume. But uh, our particular problem is a disc. And we don't, we're, you know, we're gonna pretend that our disc doesn't have any thickness because it doesn't tell us anything about our thickness. And so we, this is, it's, it's even easier to tell because they give us this little symbol, uh, sigma. Sigma is, uh, oh, so charge, uh, charge density in a volume is denoted by this little script P. It's a, it's a row. It's, it's what it's called in like the Greek alphabet. And then a sigma in the Greek alphabet is an area density. So that's why they give us the sigma. And so I know that we're assuming our disk doesn't have any thickness. And so I'm changing this volume integral to an area integral. And another way to, to simplify the integration here, because what we have to do is integrate over the whole area of this disk. And noticing that this A is directly in the middle of the disk, we can use the symmetry of disks. Disks are really just a bunch of circles. Like it's a circle, a circle, a circle, a circle, a circle. And so we're gonna integrate over all the circles. Circles go here. So it's just, you know, a, a circle at this distance, a circle at this distance. And because the, oh wait, was I on the wrong? Yes, I skipped one. Um, because we're using circles, we want to use a different coordinate system because circles, um, an area is only two coordinates. So we can either use X and Y like a, you know, on a graph or whatever, or we can use something called polar coordinates, which is much more conducive to uh, circles. So you do R, which is the distance from, that's, it's like the radius. It's from the, from the center to whatever point you're measuring. And then theta is the angle from, from zero. So it's like a zero, 90, 180, 270, 360. Uh, th I mean, 360 is just zero again. Um, and one thing, this is a, uh, this is kind of difficult to to explain. It's something called the Jacobian. Uh, it's when you switch from one coordinate system to the other coordinate system. Um, I'll look it up for you really quick. It's um, it has to do with the determinant, and it's like a linear algebra thing. Uh, but that explains why. So if you look, d a in Cartesian coordinates would just be you know, each of them, dx and dy. However, when you move to polar, you actually include this r. So instead of just dr d theta, you have r d theta dr. Um, and that comes from here, right here. Yes, it's called the Jacobian. That's what this uh, j thing is. So you were, it's, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's a bit too much. Um, I just, I've always remembered, I only learned this in the last couple of years. <laughs> I, I always just remember this thing. So that's what um, Cartesian would be. But when you switch it to polar, you include the Jacobian. So it's one coordinate system, the other coordinate system, and you need to include this thing called the Jacobian. So uh, now we have this DA. So when we write our V, we're going to replace DA with R dr d theta. So then this squiggly line for the integral is going to become two things. So like I, what I you know, probably should have done is drawn a little circle there for a, a surface area integral, because uh, this symbol right here is really devote, uh, denoted for a line integral. So just one coordinate, whereas this is, this is two coordinates. But now I have, I have the two coordinates, so I can write it as a double. So I can write it as a, a squiggly line integral over R and a squiggly line integral over theta. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, because um, our, our thing is, is directly in the center, circles make the most sense uh, because we can find the distance pretty easily. So if we were so, to draw our, yeah. 
Uh, it's like double integral now. One is like the second term integral, and the other one is theta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we'll get to that on right here. Right here. So yeah. So it would be like it would turn from this into this because I I am. Mm -hmm. It's a lot too. Yeah. And then because this thing is a double, I, based on how you do integrals, you can just split that up. So what I'm doing is I'm splitting it up into an R integral and I'm splitting it up into a theta integral. The theta one's really easy because this uh, equation that we have in the integrand, like what we're integrating, doesn't depend on theta at all. So all I have to do is um, do you know two pi minus zero and that's just two pi. Um, but the reason why it's so easy to use uh, polar and, and circles in, in the symmetry of this problem is because the distance on a particular ring, so remember we're integrating over the rings, one ring, two ring, three ring, and just going out, outwards. The distance for every, every point on the ring, so either if I'm here or if I'm here, this little script R is the same because uh, the radius of the ring doesn't change. We're, we're talking about one ring at a time and this distance Y doesn't change. So if we use Pythagorean theorem, that distance along the uh, hypotenuse is just the square root of the radius and the distance above the thing. So now that we have this uh, script R for our uh, equation right here, we can start plugging things in. So we have our charge density, the area. We have this, which becomes uh, with the Jacobian thing, R dr d theta. And then I'm bringing everything that depends on R. Notice that I'm actually keeping this sigma inside. So let me show you one thing. Uh, potential above this. The more common way to do this problem is to be given, where is it? instead of this equation right here. So this is why I was talking about like this, this makes the problem harder. Um, usually you're just given some charge distribution and it's uniform. However, this is not uniform because it, it depends on R. So if we're at this circle in the ring, we have you know some uh, charge density or if we're at the edge of the ring, it's a greater charge density because R is bigger. So that means I'm not allowed to pull the sigma outside of the integral. At, uh, this is a, a, a hyperphysics thing for uh, electric potential for different charge geometries that it's on here. Yes, yeah, so here's rings. Right, exactly. So this is a disk and you can tell all the way from the beginning right here that they're taking out the charge distribution immediately um, because it's, it's, they're assuming that it's a uniform uh, thing. So that, that's why our problem is a, a little bit more difficult. Um, we have to include that. So if we write it as the, the problem tells us, it's some number A and the, the radius, uh, you know, what, what ring we're at, we have to include that in this sigma. So I have my uh, Pythagorean theorem thing here. I am bringing all my R's into this integral this one is, uh, you know, there's there's nothing that depends on theta, so it's just two pi minus zero, like this, and then I have two pi. So I'm bringing my two pi out here, over here, those two cancel, and it's just uh, uh, one over two, or it's a two in the denominator with the epsilon. And here I'm plugging in uh, what I'm given in the problem. So now I have AR, but I also have an AR over here. So my final integral ends up being this, which is not easy. So I'm A, A is just a number, I'm given that number. So that, the A I can pull out because that's, that doesn't depend on R, but my R does. So this is the final integral on that. I would assume that you're given this on the exam. I, it's, it's kind of crazy that you are supposed to do it. Uh, if you were in like a Calc 2 class, you would do it by hand, which is called like a U sub. You would say, let r squared equal u and then you know change this thing to match it 
or what it what it hints at in the in the problem is called an integral table. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. Or you can do what I did um, and use a computer. Um, I, I mean, I basically uh, did the I, I did three and four actually. Um, so what I did was I went over to Google and I said, "Show me an integral table or, or table of integrals for things that involve square roots." And then I clicked on this. And I started scrolling until I found something that looked like what I wanted. Da, da, da. Okay, we're seeing some square roots. Now recall, I'm looking for x squared uh, over square root of x squared plus some number. Da, 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 da. Oh, we're getting there, we're getting there, and there it is. So 36 tells me that this integral is so they have a plus or a minus we're, we're concerned with the plus case so plus so then we have a plus in that one a minus here that's a that's just a, a symbol for like if you have a plus minus on this side yeah. it means it's a minus first so altogether our formula is this and uh, that still doesn't make it easy um, we have to plug things in uh, because this if you if you look at this it doesn't have the limits of the integral. And for some reason, I don't know why this integral was so hard to do. I think it's because of this LN right here. Um, I think there's some kind of uh, explosion or something like that. Um, but if I try, um, let's go back to, there's this program called Wolfram Alpha that you can use for free online. And I want to say integrate R squared over uh, the square root of r squared plus y squared. And if I just do that, it tells me the answer. Um, it actually gives me the wrong, it, it gives me the right answer, but it's just a weird, um, instead of the logarithm, they give me the tan. Let's see, they give me another. Yeah, so here's the, uh, the other uh, they gave me. They, they factored it into a weird thing, but so Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha is the, is the company that runs uh, Mathematica. So you can see the, the same symbol down here. And if I, I did it in Mathematica, I said, show me what this integral is. And this is exactly what the, um, the table of integrals told me. But uh, for some reason, if I include the values on the integral, it blows up and doesn't, it, it tells me that I'm not allowed to do that. Or, you know, for this one, because this is a free version, It'll tell me that the standard computation time exceeded, and it you know it took too long to run, so it won't keep it won't keep running and tell me, see standard you know I have to buy I have to buy it or whatever, and I was trying the same thing with my laptop and it was running for like ten minutes and wouldn't do it, so uh, that's why you know what let's let's check something what if what if instead of uh, this thing we were just given uh, the value, like say, say they said uh, sigma is 1.36 instead of a is 1.36. Then we wouldn't have a square here. We would just have that. Um, and then I would do the full thing. Let's see if it's any easier. Uh, let me clear the R because I used that down there. Yes, okay, so that is much, much easier. Clear and why. So that's um, clearly, why is it working like that? Maybe I have to tell it what why is? Why was it so confusing? Okay, let's, um, let's say y equals uh, 1.1111, right? That's where it is? No, the radius is 1111. Uh, the y is five, so it's fifty centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to stop that because this is burning the computer. Um, I'm going to say y is 0.5, and I'm going to do this again, and it tells me. So that's really weird. Um, so what we'd have to do here is, you know, all we have to do is plug in the value of r we have which is uh, and then we have that value. But we don't have that, that's not our problem. Uh, we have that. So 
But for some reason, if I do this, uh, the computer doesn't think it's uh, fun. It, it will run for hours and it just depletes my battery. Um, so let's stop that. So what I did instead was I got rid of those. So I made it what's called an indefinite interval and that it could do actually. It looks like, nope, go away, clear, why? Like that. Okay, so this is what I got from the table of integrals. And then I just did what uh, you normally do with integrals. Um, instead of, you know, what's the what's the difference between a, a definite integral and an indefinite integral? You just, um, you know, uh, plug in what the, the bounds or the limits on the integral is. So like, uh, Yes, like this. So if you have this integral, what you do is you plug in uh, your answer for this. So let's say this is what we just did. So for some reason, the computer understood what this was. Um, and to get this, we take whatever this answer is, and we plug in our values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this. And then I'm going to do minus copy and paste it again. And I'm going to plug in zero for the R and I'm going to plug in R the R. And once I simplify this, um, this one, I just keep it as it is. This one, once I plug in zero, this term, just goes away. and this term, uh, it's a zero. So that just goes away. That goes away. And then it's a square root of Y squared. So I just have log uh, Y. Um, just a, a note, uh, for some reason, Mathematica says log uh, but it's really uh, the natural log, so it's like ln. And then all I do is I set the values that uh, the problem gave me. So I know that the radius of the circle is uh, 11 centimeters, and I know the distance above the circle is uh, half a meter. And so I, I you know, re-enter this thing, and I get this as my uh, area integral. So this is meters squared. Now um, I'm heading back. So already this seems like, you know, this seems, uh, it makes me think like something's wrong. Like <laughs> there's this, this extra step with the, um, this, this part right here. Um, but what I do, you know, once I, I finally, finally found this answer, I'm heading back to my V, which looks like, remember this was just the, uh, the integral uh, inside the V. I still have this thing on the outside. And I'm given that. So I have a that is uh, 0.36, 1.36 microcoulombs. So it's uh, 10 to the negative six right yeah. here. And it's over meter squared. So I'm, I'm keeping track of my unit here just to make sure, because if you note down here, my units are supposed to be volts. So I want to make sure that I end up with that. And over here, because this was an area integral, I have meters squared. And then if I head over to Wikipedia and I say, what is the permittivity of uh, empty space? They give it to me in, um, what do they say? The units are farads over meters. Uh, I don't know what farad is, so I clicked on it. And that is a coulomb over a volt right here. So volts are what I need. So I'm going to keep that unit. So I say instead of, a, uh, you know, the unit of this being farad over meter, I'm going to say the unit is coulomb over volt meter. And once I start canceling these things out, I have a coulomb in the top. I have a meter squared in the bottom or uh, cubed in the bottom. I have a meter squared in the top. And then I bring, you know, when you simplify a fraction, if something's in the denominator, in the denominator, you bring it up to the numerator. So I have a voltmeter. So I have meters cubed, meters cubed, and coulombs, which cancel. So I end up with volts. And if I just plug all these numbers into the calculator, I get that. So if 
you know, the, the integral was very, you can tell, uh, annoying. E even if you were given a table of integrals, like just from here, like you shouldn't be expected to do that on an exam. Like that's insane. Um, so I, I don't know what I would think is, uh, this, like, I, I would say on the exam, if, uh, if it looked like what is it? this, like if, if this, if you encounter that on the exam, I would say like below the problem, it should say like this equals, you know, what we got, you know, our, our point, you know, this, this thing. Um, so I, it's, you know, this is, this is like, like, that's like calc, calc two, calc three stuff. So, and I, I don't think you're required to even have that as a, uh, a co-requisite for this class or a prerequisite. So I, I don't, I don't get why um, it just, you know, the, the problem just said, Oh, look it up. <laughs> That's basically what it said. Just look it up. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that should be the right answer. Um, well, it, I put the answer in and it says like, it said that it's wrong because the answer shouldn't be negative. And then I put the same number, but positive and it didn't work either. Um, okay. Um, well, maybe let's see, uh, I don't know. Let's try a use of, maybe we did the integral wrong or something. Um, okay. Let me start right. Uh, use of means I do, I say, let u equal r squared. Uh, that means uh, if I take the derivative of that, I say du equals 2r dr. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that means if I reverse that, uh, 1 over 2r du equals dr. Okay, so now I'm going to start plugging things in. I have um, the integral of r squared square root r squared plus y squared dr. And then if I plug all my stuff in, that becomes the integral of u over the square root of u plus y squared. And the dr becomes um yeah that's useless why would it why would that work hold on i gotta look this up um sim symbol lab There shouldn't be any R's in the because if I if I plugged in uh, the dr equals one over two r, that would look stupid. What the fuck? I have no idea how to do that. What does that even mean? Um, okay. Uh, I mean, let's just see. What if maybe they know what they're doing? Um, definite interval, definite interval. Zero to R. What? No, 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 no. Capital R. Let's just do A. Um, it doesn't really help me. Or does it? Let's, um, let's see. Why did that work? And the other thing didn't work. Symbol like this. I mean, this is, it's a nice website because they usually, they tell you steps like this. Like this is, you know, this is what I, this is what got me through Calc 2 and 3. Um, but this is a much more powerful software. So I don't get um, why that's, 
Uh, okay, whatever. Let's just plug this in over here. But this one looks easier than mathematical. But yeah, for some reason. So, right, we have, let's enter this, those values, and let's see what they give us. Um, so we have simplify uh, negative one over two, um, y squared, uh, the log, uh, that big, big thing. Um, y and r plus um, square root for square root. I always forget how to write this. There. Uh, r squared plus y squared. Um, okay. Oh, wait, there's an absolute value. So maybe I should include that. It looks important. Um, what is that? Yes. Yeah. So absolute value around that whole quantity right there. Actually, no, there's no way that's important because those are both positive numbers. Uh, whatever. Uh, okay, so log of that plus another fraction r, another square root of this thing. that um, over two, right? Is that what, okay, so that's a negative. Let's just fill that out here because it looks nicer. Negative one half y squared log r plus square root r squared y blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's see what this gives us. I have to close it. Okay, so that is not what I got in Mathematica. So clearly I did something wrong when I was uh, like clearly doing this and then plugging in this, I, I messed up somewhere. Um, let's see, where did I mess up? That goes to zero because it's a zero times something. That's just zero. Um, and then this is zero, so that goes away. That zero, so that goes away. And so that's just y. Um, minus zero doesn't do anything, so you just do plus, plus. Yeah, why doesn't that? Huh, okay, well, maybe I did something wrong. Anyway, let's try this. So now we have this thing. Um, let's take, uh, where was that? This. So this was all the numbers that were outside. It was like um, right here, like all the, like the A, the this thing, the two, the epsilon. Um, so let's copy that. And instead of that negative thing, let's do this thing. Okay, let's see. Maybe that works. 67.1824 volts. Stupid integral. Okay, I'll try. Yeah, it worried. That is really weird. That's the only time in my life that this has given a, a better answer than uh, Mathematica. Maybe they uh, are up in their game. Or maybe like it, they tried to make it like more simpler for us, like um, so symbol lab helps better, but Mathematica is good for advanced level things. Yeah, that was really weird. I'm confused. Whatever. Anyway, well, thank I you think, so much. Yeah, I think, really I think the main the main thing uh, the main like part of the problem that um was you know important was like changing changing from different coordinate systems and then like the difference between like you know two three and four and like a blob of two so hopefully yeah. that helps. thank you so much yeah absolutely as soon as um as soon as the recording goes to the email i'll do the same you know send it to you mm -hmm. thank you also like um uh, are you available on wednesday